For the first time in Counter-Strike history, there will be no Canadians present at the Major. And as your Canadian host of Armour Hate Weeks, across these five weeks, I've got to first state that I have taken great pleasure in being able to kick players when they are down at their lowest moment, losing and getting eliminated from or failing to qualify for the most important tournament of their entire lives. Across Europe, Asia, and now into the Americas, I never thought that I would have to turn the gun onto myself, and I've got to say, I don't like it. So instead of doing that, I've cherry-picked a round here from the end of map 3, where Liquid ended up losing to Complexity, to display what might be the worst anti-eco ever played, and show and shine a light on how this has nothing to do with the Canadians on the team. Let's take a look. P bars, they are being worn away by the attrition of the spam, the flames, the nades. Kinder spray doesn't work out though. Grim gets the kill. And Kadian needs to step up because he is the only one here. This is the second shot. Now he's gonna get over. Guys. He just kept fighting forward. Twist at least is able to step in, but Jay What the fuck was that? That's going on a long list of rounds that Donk wouldn't have let go. All right, let's take a look at what should have happened right there with four pistoling players running at you at 100 miles per hour. That's what should have happened. This kid's still in diapers and he did that. You kinder, what was this spray, man? No. Watching this was just pure pain into Cadian and this. Second shot being missed. Not seeing the wide player on Banana getting run down by pistols. Oh my god, what the fuck. It was all fun and games until it happened to me. I gotta say, this was... This was this was awful. You know, this is the first time in a, first time ever that uh, Canada gets to be proud of an American, though. Okay, and I gotta say, uh, Alige, shout out to you, my friend. There has been a lot of poetry at these RMRs, and I think to end on this note is particularly sweet for complexity and for Jason Lake. Let me explain. Twist left Phase Clan. When GameSquare acquired both Phase and Complexity, because it was up in the air, the future of both of these rosters and organizations. And the rumors were that Phase was going to fold, that Complexity was going to fold, they would sell the team off. And now we have come to a situation where Phase still exists and Complexity has been bought back by Jason Lake. Alige went from Liquid to Complexity and took a career risk in doing so. And Twist jump ship from phase to liquid to rejoin rejoin his old organization and now it's liquid who don't qualify to the major this is the first time since 2018 that twist and nafly have not qualified to a major and the first time in history again that there is no canadian to carry the mantle for uh for the country and Alige, it would have been the end of his streak as well considering he played with nafly and twist prior to 2021 Alige carried the fuck out of complexity throughout this entire RMR and uh, definitely earned this uh, if, with even Hauser at the very end of this game having a redemption 4K. I guess I'll just call it that. Uh, what an unbelievable 2v4 situation. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at these op shots? Why don't we? Because there's definitely a world where the script was that this goes all south for complexity and this Hate Week video is dedicated to them and the amount of close and tragic losses that they've had to bear over the last year and a half. But instead, we got this round, a moment of unbelievable, you know, clutch and a great show of X Factor. Whereas for Liquid, we had about as much clutch as rain on a Friday night, okay? They, have a, they had a, about as much X Factor as Jason has hairs on his goddamn head. All right, that was absolutely horrible here on Overpass. Definitely a game that could have gone the other way, but it doesn't. And so the story is told now that the Canadian streak has ended in an exciting turn of events. You might be wondering why I have this graphic up. And if you put your glasses on, you'll notice that this isn't Cadian in the front. And then you'll notice to the side that there is no jabby or stown on the right this right here is heroic with the weakest 
two-fifths of the roster, who have qualified to the Copenhagen Major. And in another stroke of poetry, somehow the two guys that got left behind are the only two to have qualified to the first ever CS2 Major. So unbelievable, somehow heroic with Kixan coming in from Apex and the additions of Nikodaz to technically replace Kadian in some fashion and Nertz as Rookie of the Year who got left behind by, by his team on Ents to come in and replace Jabby have... Uh, have actually have actually done it. They've they're they're the ones to win the off season. Heroic have won the off season. You actually sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. So what does this mean? This means that Landersland is going to be the biggest Canadian event of the year. All right, and I'm just going to skip around in this video. Tickets are on for sale, by the way. If you would like to attend, it's this is not a joke. Ten thousand dollar land happening. Uh, in uh, April, on April 20th and 21st, and I don't know how many tickets are sold right now, but last time we had 105 players waitlisted for our 5K event. Now it's 10K. Now it's 32 teams. I think it's going to sell hella fast. All right. So if you want to get involved with that, Launders Land, we're going to have a bar. We're going to have catering. We're going to have 32 teams. We're going to have a boxer booth so you can buy merchandise without paying customs or duties. In person from me, we're going to have a zone present there. It is going to be a goddamn party for two days. All right. Okay. I have to plug that because what else does Canada have anymore? What, what else does Canada have anymore? All right. And I can also take this time to maybe redirect from Canada because I can't even talk about that right now to talking about this drama where Warden got banned from the practice floor of the PGL CS2 major for splashing mulbs with water after a game. What in the fuck is this? Wild Cards coach Warden has been banned from the practice floor even though they are eliminated because he repeatedly threw water on an M80 player after their game during the high fives. I don't even have anything to funny. I can't even imagine this situation, right? I can't even think about what could have taken place. I mean, Warden's been in this game for a long ass time. You see Smuya in the, in the comments saying toxic mobs. And we have no idea. I'm not going to say anybody got deserved to get splashed by water, but, uh, this doesn't happen for no reason, obviously. This is something that you would see maybe happen with two teams who are playing against each other, throwing it over the barrier, you know, old school land style. But after everything's cooled down during the high fives, what happened here? I wish I had more to tell you. I really don't know. Um, but here's Warden's apology. Okay, so there was some drama happening at the RMRs, but the instant apology and direct apology from Warden uh, uh, of course comes out right away. So yeah. All right. So I'm drama right there and Hey, I just threw some flame on Kadian and Yakinder who actually had a really, really rough RMR overall, but maybe we could celebrate this one ace. This was actually, it's actually a sick play from Kadian. Watch for the Pasha flick. He gets the ace. Yeah, he throws he a nade the after the first shot comes in, then falls back to team. emo, Stunt shot in on shot JT. And look at this Pasha flick. A bit what was that? What was that flick right there? To make the shot stars. What was that? Pasha's on a bike right now. Okay, to the major. What was this flick? To make the shot stars. What was that? A little scoop de dupe right there. Okay. That one is I don't know, but that, that did get me hyped. That did get me hyped. Now, Kadian, man, at this uh, RMR, it. it they, uh, Kadian said in the interview he did with M&Ms, and this is a, definitely an important point that obviously this team has an insane amount of changes, right? It's not just it's Kadian coming in to call as a brand new caller for all of these guys. Then it's Zeus coming in to coach. Then it's Skulls coming in from Brazil, from Payne. And then it's Twist and Naf as the two. And Twist is rejoining Naf after playing on phase and being reunited with uh, Nafly as the only player on Liquid. Um, for this team. So when it came to fraud watching this RMR, this if complexity had lost this game, I would have been absolutely livid. But obviously a part of me cheering for the Canadians here on Team Liquid and really believing that this Liquid project would work. Well, Liquid won't be playing shit this fucking season, right? They don't even have the major now. They didn't qualify to Chengdu. They don't have I don't even know what they're what they're going to be playing now. Liquid are, are basically without matches, in and in with a roster that should be 
shooting for championships. That should this is a complete, obviously, ab, a failure. And of course, you could blame the seating, right? You could blame the fact that the RMRs had bad seating, and that's that's fair play. That is a real argument, right? This is a situation where Valve, who are running two fucking events this year, who are that are actually being hosted by other people, so all the work is done by someone else just had to hit refresh on their fucking algorithm to update the rankings for the teams coming into their events, RMRs, and they failed to do that. And now those teams got fucked over by bad seedings. And the only reason that I didn't want to bring up seeding and everything like that is because it's fucking seeding. People get fucked over. People have bad seeding. People get bad draws. People get tech issues. Things happen. And you still have to win your games, right? Now, the NARMR is not bad just because of the bad seeding, but it's also because if you lose one best of one and one best of three, you're out. You don't even have a chance to play through the best teams and then get a chance to beat up on the lower ranked teams and then get another lucky chance to qualify through to the end. Now, the reason I didn't want to focus on any of that is because our fucking bar for North American teams is piss low at the moment, okay? Right now, we are excited to be almost good enough, and perpetually so. We look at complexity, the amount of absolute tragedies that they have had ever since the Rio RMRs where they lost to Imperial and that overtime, overpass game into losing to outsiders at Cato in that overtime game into you know every single 2-1 overtime loss for complexity that 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 held them back from qualifying to something getting into playoffs or winning an event or having any kind of start in CS2 like they could have versus FaZe at Sydney in another overtime loss this would have just been the tragedy the end all tragedies and an absolute embarrassment and I would have felt so bad for Elige who is the he you know complexity got what they paid for when they got a leash right they got an absolute superstar who knows how to win rounds who knows how to win games who trades who is absolutely consistent who is a star player who is a rose in the concrete on a team of s such unbelievable inconsistency and seem to be able to be to subside to you know or seem to be able to just take it on the chin whenever they lose to a tough team and don't really bounce back. Just play good CS, kind of get close to winning, lose again, and hope they still have fans afterwards. But no, Complexity actually do find a small victory here. Now, is this enough? No, it's qualifying to the major. It's relief, right? It's not success. But it is actually important for the org, for Jason, who took a risk on this team, who, again, don't have the star players and massive buyouts like Liquid have, um, who now are a, you know another example of someone who, like a team that maybe we could call a super team or a team that gets close to it with the amount of money spent and excitement around the roster and getting twists back and a KDN as an IGL. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways... I'm not I'm not done on liquid or anything like that. It's still it's still early for them. It's it's definitely a a failure and a huge loss, but I mean it's uh it's still months into making the team. And yeah, you could say that you got teams like Heroic, you got teams like fucking Ents with Glaive and four players that he only started playing with hours before the RMR lock qualified to the major in Europe. So yeah, there is some irony to the fact that you've got Liquid trying specifically to form a team to play in NA, to play in the NA RMR and still losing in the easier RMR. And we still want to blame things like seeding when they got to play teams that are lower ranked than many of the teams they probably would have had to face in the EU RMR. So it, there is some irony to that. And there is, you maybe do, maybe we should be pointing and laughing a little bit. Um, but I think for them as a, as a roster when it comes to the rest of the year and the amount of time they're going to play together, I think we're still expecting them to get better. I'm not going to say that this is like it and that the project failed. I think I can't go that far. So there is that. But um, yes, people get messed up with these RMRs. And the sad fact is we only talk about the teams that win. The teams that don't make it through will barely get mentioned in the future. And that's why winning is everything. Um, and it sucks when you get bad seating. It's amazing when you can survive it. But um, here it is, the man who survived it, you know, took, uh, this is sort of has, it's giving hex in the way that he bought back Optic 
um, after an acquisition. And uh, I don't know the details of that one, but Jason Lake acquiring complexity back from GameSquare to ensure their future and have a Counter-Strike team as a man who has been in the game and around for so long. I am definitely very happy for Mr. Jason Lake here. So that's uh that's that's it that's what we got to witness no canadians at the first cs2 major racism taking a massive hit right now in the worst way possible and i think people love to hate on racism but i, I really wish that there was a bit more sympathy for us racists at the moment especially right now um but this does mean hate week has gone on gone off with a great success uh we have got to hate on and hate month and this hate series has just been absolutely paying off week over week somehow, even at the Asian RMR, all the way through EU A and B, with teams like Astralis not making it through, with Heroic and Ents and their stories, and Glaive making it through, with now Complexity and Elige making it through, Liquid and somehow not making it through. It's it's just been too beautiful to write. So I just want to thank you guys for joining me on this journey. Of course, now we venture into the Pickums and the actual PGL major. It has been very fun, and I might bring back this energy for the next RMR. But uh, until then... I hope you guys all do very well, and I'll definitely see you soon because we've got lots more content going. It's been uh, really fun making these videos for YouTube. So, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next week. Keep racism alive, and uh, sorry, Liquid. Uh, better luck next time.